So that's the issue with X-ray structures. Now we're going to even much more briefly look at NMR structures. So there's only uh, one um, major issue here for the NMR structures. Now the NMR structures are frequently called solution structures. Um, and so that reflects uh, the technique uh, that is used to determine the structure. So I want you to pull up uh, on your web browser the um, 1OWX. And we're going to look at the record uh, for that particular structure. Now, NMR spectroscopy does not use crystals as the source of their signal. Actually, what's being used here uh, is the protein in solution. You expose that protein in solution to uh, radio frequency radiation. And you'll get out some chemical shift spectra. Now, I'm just going to wave my hands here and tell you that what the spectroscopist does is they can go into that shift spectra and they can assign atoms to those different shifts. And um, depending on the type of spectra, whether it's nosy or cozy or toesy, or there's a whole bunch of different uh, uh, frequency radiation that can be applied, you get different distances. So what you get out from those chemical shifts is an indication of which atoms are physically close to other atoms in the structure. And it's sort of a crude measurement. So it's, uh, they're real close, or they're sort of medium close, or they're close but distant. So you sort of have three different lengths most of the time. And so you can take your uh, extended structure, and you can apply restraints to that file. Uh, to that structure. And so you, you put your restraints in a file, and that says, for this structure, move the structure so that atom 1 is within 3 angstroms of atom 2. Atom 5 is within 5 angstroms of atom 10, etc. So you have different restraints which you apply to this file. And out of that, you get the structures that fit those restraints. Now, for the spectroscopist, they actually don't get just a single structure out, like you do with an x-ray structure. They're going to calculate, say, 100 structures, and they actually deposit the top 20 or the top 30. And so when you pull that PDB file down, you're actually getting more than one structure. And so you can look at those 20 different structures and try and evaluate which structure is actually the best one. Sometimes within the comments, there will be a comment about this is the best conformer. And many times it's the first structure in the file is the best average conformer. It may be a minimized average. It may not. It may be just the best conformer. But you can search in your PDB file uh, for that information. Uh, and so that's what you see here is, again, you'll get a quick uh, sense that it's an NMR structure because you'll realize you have more than one structure there. And this particular structure has floppy ends. And you'll also see here, if you look at the experimental details, they calculated 60 conformers, and 20 of them are submitted. Uh, now, in the older structures, they used to put the best structure in a separate PDB file. So those about 30 years ago, if uh, experimentalists have not solved an updated structure, you will find one file, say one OWX having one structure, and then one OWY having the 20 structures. But uh, in the structure solved uh, in the last 10 years or so, what you tend to find more often is that your first structure in the file is actually, um, if you want to use just one structure, is the best one to work with. Uh, now you can display your PDB files to get this information. Uh, and if you search through, you can search for this remark line. We're not actually going to take the time to do that today, but you can find that remark line and then realize uh, the best conformer in this 
ensemble is model one. The line continues on. Now, if you actually look at those 20 structures, uh, you can start to see here, I made a little movie as I flipped through the 20 structures, you can start to see the differences in the structures. And that is the core of the protein is pretty well determined and is pretty stable because of our restraints. That's a well determined area. But these ends at the N and C terminus uh, are not restrained by contacts with the rest of the molecule. So you will see this type of behavior with the NMR structures. With the X-ray structures, these ends would qualify as missing atoms and you would just never see them because the electron density is too spread out and it just would never be seen. Uh, so that's, those are the issues with the solution structure.